Perfect. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is the second day for our gardening education week, Garden Ed, Gardening Ed Week 2024. Uh, my name is Christian Acosta. I'm an agriculture educator from Cornell Cooperative Extension, and I'm happy to be here with this second uh, day of this series, online, online series. And yesterday, we were talking about soil care and composting. Today, we're going to be talking about seeds and plant propagation, and for tomorrow, about controlling pests, and Thursday, uh, houseplants, and the last one is producing your own herbs at home. So remember that you can join anytime. You don't need to uh, attend to all of the classes. And with the same registration link, you can join uh, one of these days at 10 a.m. So for today, let's go to our class. Uh, if you have any question at any moment, uh, feel free to unmute your microphone, uh, ask your question, or in the chat so I can be reading your questions. Okay, so let's let's start with seeds and plant propagation. Okay, let's move this screen here. So much better. Uh, so we are going to be talking about the basics of seeds, the seed selection, uh, where to get the seed, our seeds, how to start the seeds, uh, different ways, not only by seeds, it means asexual propagation, propagation tools and equipment that you can have. And then we can have the space for some questions uh, if you have any question. Okay, so let's start talking <clears throat> about why is this important? Why are we talking about seeds in general? If it, it seems to be easy, right? Just in general. So seed propagation is just, okay, put in, going to buy any seeds and put it uh, in the soil, sowing our seeds and that's it. Just some water and waiting for them to come to life. So it's basically that simple, but sometimes we can see that it's not that simple. So uh, just in general, even when it's when we have that easy, we are lucky to have everything perfect. Uh, it's that simple. We are doing this because we want plants. And why we want plants? Because we want to eat uh, from the plants or we want to decorate uh, our garden, our office, our house. So we contribute to with this uh, biodiversity boost. Uh, it's also self-sufficiency, so we can be growing our own food. Also, saving some money, so that's economic wisdom, saving some money when we can grow our own vegetables and fruits and we can uh, feed ourselves. And so also we are eco-friendly because usually in the big production, uh, well, they, they are bigger challenges, right? So same time, a lot of uh, pesticides and it's hard to control some pests and diseases. So in the same way, a lot of pesticides uh, just to prevent some diseases and also to control some of the pests and diseases. And also just the educational power when you know what you're doing and you know how to do it uh, properly so you can teach and keep sharing that, that knowledge with your family, with your friends, with a neighbor, with someone around. You, you can spread that knowledge. So this is basically when, why we are doing it and when it's that easy, okay, fine. But when it's not is when we start learning and reading more, attending to these classes or different classes and reading and reading and consulting because sometimes it's not that that simple, that easy, right? So one, <clears throat> one of the, the main uh, characteristics, the main thing that you need to keep in mind when you start from seeds, when you start propagating plants from seeds, it's something called seed viability, viability. So it's basically if the seed uh, is good or not. If it's just something that it's you can put out there uh, in the soil in any substrate, and it's coming to life, it's germinating, and yeah, success. Or if not, 
because even you can have everything perfect, the temperature, the light, uh, the water, everything, but if it's not a viable seed, so if the, uh, the seed is not that good, so uh, it's not even your fault, it's about the seed itself. So <clears throat> to have a uh, good seeds, we need to keep them in some conditions. Uh, for example, the storage. So the storage condition, uh, we need to keep our seeds in a cool, dark and dry place. So if it's especially now the, the summer months, uh, it can be very humid sometimes, right? So the seeds start getting they can start getting that humidity from the environment and start sometimes you can see that you have a fruit or just the seeds in a in a packet but if it's too moist uh, they they can well not all of them but sometimes they can be germinating even when you don't put the seeds directly in the in the soil or you're not watering um just sometimes but so just to keep that viability, it's necessary to keep them in a cool, uh, dark place and dry place. Uh, I'm gonna mention some some tips and some methods that you can be using uh, to, to store your seeds and keep that perfect environment for them. Uh, also the seed type. So we have thousands of plants around the world, right? And not all of them, they keep that viability. We have plants that the seeds can last for just a couple months. And we have some seeds that they can last for decades. And very old seeds, and they, they are viable. So how to know about that is about reading. Before st starting uh, sowing your seeds, you can be reading about that, start reading if, for example, with lettuce, I know that I want to grow my lettuce and I have some seeds from two years ago. So probably that those seeds, if they are in a cool, dark and dry uh, space, so they are, they are good. Probably they are good because with lettuce, it's usually about five years to have um, viable seeds. But on the other hand, if we have, for example, I want to grow some peas, some beans and um, so sometimes i can have the seeds from last year or even some varieties of tomatoes for example that not the heirlooms just different uh, different ones some hybrids some different varieties and i can have my seeds from last year that it was just last season and then you go and start your tra your trace and then it's like just few of them coming to life germinating and then it's like what's going on with the rest of them if they are new like right like we still think that is new it was just a couple months ago uh, so what happened so sometimes it depends the varieties uh, we can have some viability for just a short period of time and sometimes we can have a longer per period of time but for example if the we keep the seeds yeah, just out there, uh, open, the packet is open, exposed to the light, to any um, humidity, to even sometimes rain, etc. So even if the, the viability is five years, but is not properly stored, so in that case, we lose that viability. So that, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, also, so the seed age, so about the viability, if the packet says, or even sometimes in the packet, it doesn't say how much time it's going to be viable, but you can be reading about that. And for example, viability of uh, tomato seeds, so especially like a big boy tomato seeds. So the variety that you want to grow. And then you can, you know that, okay, uh, X number of months or years. So in that case, uh, you know that if the seed is too old, uh, probably it's not gonna like why to bother trying to uh, run a seed germination test or putting the the seeds out there when uh, there is a high percentage, a high probability that is not gonna germinate. So uh, that's why to keep in mind about the seed age, the type, the conditions, 
the moisture content, like I mentioned before, uh, we need to reduce the moisture. We need to keep the seed dry and also the temperature, so not too hot and not the opposite, not too cold, because still the, the seed is not growing. It's not like the plant that is growing actively, but still there is um, there are some cells inside that we need to keep um, in a temperature that is not below freezing conditions. Some seeds, they can tolerate that, and we're going to be talking about some methods and techniques for that. Um, but for example, vegetables, and most of the seeds that they grow during the summer, when the temperature is above 60 degrees, 50 degrees. So in that case, uh, we need to keep in mind the, the temperature. So it's not that hard. We, you're not, you don't need to uh, place like a special uh, area of your home just with a cool, dark, dry conditions. Some temperature that is not below 30 degrees or most of the vegetables and fruits. Some of the fruits, they can tolerate perfectly even uh, below zero degrees, uh, they are fine. But for most of what we are growing right now, uh, at least above, uh, try to keep them about above uh, 50 degrees. Also the seed coat integrity. So we can have viable seeds stored in a cool, dark place uh, the seed age is fine, so it's good, it's a new seed. But the seed coat, uh, probably they are scratched or accidentally they get smashed or something, uh, some insect can be eating the seed. So at that point, uh, also we can lose that viability in that way if the seed is, uh, the seed coat is not, um, is not in perfect condition. And also the pathogens and pests, because of course the seeds, they have nutrition in it. So that's why we eat, for example, the beans, we eat the beans seeds, right? And we have some starch and some nutrients in it. So we are not the only ones trying to eat those, uh, especially some insects and some pathogens, some fungi, mostly like fungi, bacteria, they also can be uh, spoiling our seeds. So when we have some seed, different types of seeds, not just like the beans that we can see that the coat is, uh, is not that hard. We can easily germinate see, uh, bean seeds because it's so easy. You just put even in uh, a paper towel, a damp paper towel and it germinates. Uh, but it's not the same with something like this, right? With the, with the peach, uh, seeds right or some uh, like a pine seed because they have like a very thick and hard shell so even if you put that in water for one month one year uh, probably it's not gonna germinate yet uh, maybe if the conditions are like perfect but in general that is gonna take even years to to go through that hard uh, shell for the seed. So in that case, we have something called um, different dorm dormancy and we can break that dormancy. So dormancy is when the seed is like dormant. So it's like, uh, I know it's not the professional term, but just assimilate like it's sleeping. So it's just there, it's not growing, it's still viable. So it has the potential to germinate, but is not going to germinate until the conditions are perfect. So, for example, uh, we have the physical, the physical dormancy that is with the, the example of the peach um, seed that it has that a uh, hard seed that it can, it protects the seed from water, uh, from anything outside. So that's why I mentioned that you can put that in water and for months keep that in there and it's still not germinating. So in that case, the, the seeds, we, to break that dormancy, we will need some uh, physical methods. So for example, sanding that is the seeds. There are some handmade, like homemade uh, 
physical uh, devices that people are can be making for this when it's not a professional producer. And for example, just with sending a paper in, in a any container, just a bottle or something, uh, they inside they put the the sandpaper and then any handle. So in that case, they put the seeds inside, close that container, and start moving and just uh, turning that the seeds constantly. So in that case, it's like being sanding that uh, that shell, that protection. And in that case, it helps to break that that seed coat because we don't want to smash them because uh, we can damage the seed, right? So in that case, we just want to create a uh, like any like a uh, like a path or just gently trying to break that that peel in a way that the water can be going inside. So in that case, for promoting that water penetration, so we can start helping the seed to, to break that dormancy. There is a different a dormancy that is about chemical. So it's not about the, the thick wall. Well, also we, with some pines, we can have that, uh, like that shield for the seed, right? That thick uh, coat. But also we need something else like to make them germinate because even if they have water inside and it's like, no, that dormancy is not, we're not breaking that dormancy. So in that case, if they use on the plants naturally, they have some uh, chemicals within the seeds that we need to break to, in order to make them uh, germinate, to promote that germination. Uh, we need to do something like stratification that is exposing the seeds to a different <clears throat> different condition. It can be cold, like especially for the pine seeds. Um, this naturally happens during the winter. So uh, you don't need to be doing something like that. But if you want to uh, do it quickly, uh, not, not waiting for the winter. So in that case, we can do that process called stratification. I'm going to be talking about that in a bit. <clears throat> or soaking the, the seed in a different solution. So the seed is uh, feeling like cold enough and giving that, um, breaking the dormancy just with some uh, chemical. So this is something that happens just an, as one example uh, down in Colombia. So I'm originally from Colombia. <laughs> Sorry. And we have some three uh, apples, apples and pears. And so you will wonder like how, how is that even possible? Because we don't have any winter. We don't have seasons. So it's most mostly uh, different areas. You want a cold uh, temperature, you just move <clears throat> to a different city and it's gonna be like that all year round. So how to reach uh, freezing temperatures. So in that case is with a chemical dormancy with some chemical products, they, they inject that uh, directly close to the roots of the the apple trees or the pear. And in that case, the, the tree, it feels like cold, like it's freezing outside when it can be perfectly 80 degrees, 75 degrees outside. But the trees start losing the leaves and start going in that dormancy period. And if it's about seeds, also we can be um, um, making that like cold, chemically cold environment for the seeds. And in that case, germinating. So that's, that's how some of the apples from Colombia, they are produced. Because other than, other than that, it would be impossible to produce any seeds because no winter, no cold temperatures or like freezing temperatures is not that easy to reach down there. So we can do it chemically. Mm, of course, it's not the best practice, right? Because we are using chemicals, any synthetic chemicals. So it's not that healthy, especially if we want some organic production. Now, another way to break this uh, dormancy is like I called uh, the stratification. But before that, we're talking about scarification. 
So the first method that I mentioned, for example, with the pitch uh, seed is about scarification. So with the scarification is using anything abrasive. It can be sandpaper, it can be a, like a grading box or anything that um, is not smashing with a hammer. No, it's just trying to go uh, gentle, a little gentle with the seed. Uh, but same time, something abras abrasive that we can be removing the couple layers of that that coat. And, it, and this is just accelerating. It mi mimics the natural process of abrasion from the soil. So usually when that happens out in the nature, so we this the, the animals, the soil, rain, the different temperatures, all that start uh, naturally doing that process until finally, after a couple of years, uh, the water finally start going into the seed and then we can have the plant germinating. Uh, but that can take years. So if we want to do it in just a couple months or even weeks doing that, uh, we can start doing something like that. So we, with sandpaper. If you want to do it, you have some time and not any device, anything, just the sandpaper and start doing it by hand with the pitch uh, or any, any seed that they have that um, hard uh, shell. That's to promote that. If not, we can, we can just go and buy the little tree because when, it's, uh, when this is done, uh, commercially, of course, they have the devices and everything to do it quick, and they take that work. And then the stratification, like for example, for the pine, it's about exposing the seeds to cold. Naturally, that happens during the winter. Uh, how to do it by yourself? So you can just something, for example, taking the apple seeds, uh, any like the apple, uh, pear, a peach and taking these seeds you need to read that's why it's better always to read before uh, starting anything any project any gardening or any uh, fruit plant or anything that you want to grow so if for example i want to grow my apples and i know that uh, even if i have viable seeds i need to give them some a freezing temperature, something really cold. So in that case, that promotes the germination. So it's something that simple is putting the, the seeds in the refrigerator. So, and you adjust the, the temperature, right? So it's that easy that the simple method, just putting like the seeds in, a, it, even for a seed germination test for apple tree, apple seeds, uh, something like a sandwich bag, a seed top bag with a damp paper towel, the seeds in it, you close that one, go to the refrigerator or freezer, and, and you keep a cold temperature in for a couple of days. And after that, you take the seeds out again, and then you can move the seeds to, to the ground or to the trays where you want to um, start watering and start growing your, your seeds. So in that case, mm, it promotes that germination. Other than that, it's a little hard and challenging. You will need to wait until the winter because even if everything is perfect, the soil, the water, and the seeds are viable, but no cold, it's hard to make them germinate. Now, there are different seeds that they have. Um, they need soaking. They, they need to be a first a pre-treatment with water. Uh, for example, the what's the name? The chia chia seeds. Uh, so you can see that uh, chia seeds they have when you put them in water, then they have like a, a like a substance that is very like jelly. The the texture I'm trying to think about the texture is like a gelatin is a different texture. It's not really sticky, but you can see that uh, some of the passion fruit, um, well, there is a fruit that we don't have here in the US, but we have in tropical areas. 
and it's similar to passion fruit and the seeds are like chia seeds but way bigger and sweet very sweet and people eat because of that natural sugar that it has uh, so this is a method that the seed they they have so in that way if they are absorbing water this the like the natural chemical compounds in there it makes sure that it's absorbing water so it keeps the water there even if you remove the water they are going to have still some water around the seed and making sure that the water is there for the seed so it's so easy to germinate these ones because you don't need to be really adding tons of water and you can just soak the the seeds in water before moving to the to the trays or to the garden directly so in that case that's that simple it's easy probably we know that for the school projects for the kids uh, chia seeds is easy to for them to be germinating and so that's for this the seed the soaking also when we have not even not only these ones with that uh, with that method of absorption of water also just soaking some of the um, beans or peas we know that the seeds can be really small right and then you put some water you do that the pre-treatment is not necessary because they can be germinating really easy but when you put in water uh, 24 hours before moving to to the final place to the trays or to the garden and that helps a lot to absorb water and in that moment is when the plant okay feeling that the conditions are met so now it's time to start germinating so that can help for many seeds and, and there are some of the seeds that they need something like smoke so for example in some of the areas where is fire prone uh, ecosystems so for example some of the tree the pine trees in some of forest like we know that constantly we have for example fires from Canada, from some uh, forest. And these areas is like, oh, it's a tragedy and having all this fire. But naturally, even without human interve intervention, uh, naturally these areas also can catch fire. And this fire, it's actually something good for some of the plants. So of course there are some animals and it's not good for everybody because it affects different plants around animals and what. But for some of these plants, some of the bigger trees, uh, some of those seeds, they are not going to germinate until they have that temperature, like really high temperatures, and they are supposed to smoke. So when they have that exposure to the smoke, just chemically, uh, is when the seed is like feeling that, okay, now it's the time to germinate. Now it's the perfect environment and the ashes from the the trees around and everything that was burned. So that actually helps the seed to be growing. So it's it's curious. There is a documentary about that, how naturally uh, nature makes sure that uh, there are some conditions like that, that it looks like a tragedy or something really bad for some organisms, but it's good for some organisms same time. Uh, this is an example, some of the pines in these areas. And chemically, we can do also that, but this is, I just wanted to mention that there are some options like some chemicals like using the uh, gibberellic acid, uh, because this is something that is used mostly in laboratories uh, because it's expensive. Usually this hormone is a hormone uh, that when we apply that to the seeds, so it stimulates the germination. It doesn't matter if it's the perfect environment or not for the seed it makes feel the seed that okay yeah it's a perfect environment and stimulate the germination this especially for research like for very old viable seeds uh, for example in Norway we know that there is a big bank of uh, seeds and we can have very old seeds in there so to make them germinate if it's necessary at some point uh, something like this this hormone can be used to start stimulating the germination in these very old seeds.
And like I mentioned, this is really expensive, just a tiny bottle, a tiny, tiny bottle. It can be hundreds, thousands of dollars. So in that way, it's, um, it's only when it's necessary for laboratory. That's something that you're not going to be doing at home. And now some of the good practice or best practices for your seeds. And like I mentioned before, the cool and dark environment, having dry conditions, <clears throat> the air air tight containers. So just an example, the mason jars that they have um, like a seal that nothing, no air is coming inside. You can be putting your seeds in something like that. Just these little jars that it's glass and it has like some rubber, some rubbery protection, something. I don't know exactly the word for that rubbery thing on the lid. And then you can seal that uh, container. And optional, if you want to be like extra, make sure, uh, do something extra to make sure that they are dry. And in that case, you can use these little packets that they have like silica, like little uh, crystals, if you open one of them. And that they, usually they come uh, with new products, with shoes, with in boxes, for anything that little envelopes that you can read that it says silica, silica, silica gel. Uh, those ones, they absorb humidity. So you can use something like that uh, to put in there and then close your jar just to make sure that it's completely dry. It's not necessary, but like I mentioned, is that optional extra step. And la please label your seeds. That happens, I think, to everybody at some point, to all of us, that happens that you're storing the seeds and sometimes it looks like obvious that if I have something like this is of course it's beans, right? And they are beans, but we can have multiple beans or there are some different ones. For example, here we have these yellow ones, these ones, and we can have like different varieties of lentils. And it's like, oh, now which one is which one? And when we, you are sowing your seeds, especially because you cannot see each individual plant, label always your seeds. And when you're planting everything with the label and with a marker or something that is not going to, if it's raining or for some reason, someone just wiped that and then, oops, it's erased. So no, make sure to use a good lab labeling system, even if you have a label maker. So, okay, that's that's fine. That's good. And be labeling everything. And keep an eye every now and then, even if you're not gardening, even if you are going to be out of the garden for a couple months or years, uh, you can keep an eye on the seeds every now and then just to see if they are okay, if they have some mold. For example, sometimes they still there can be some humidity in there, and some yeah, so fungi it can be growing in there, some fungi, yeah. so if they or some any mold. So yes, every now and then you can be uh, money be monitoring your your seeds, um, try to be organized. Something like this is it looks nice, right? They are organized and they are not mixed one each other. You can have like this or individual containers with the labels and everything organized and optional. Some people, they can have freezing for long-term storage, but if you're going to be freezing before doing that, read online, read about the minimum temperature for, uh, um, for any seed. Uh, so minimum temperature uh, for uh, lettuce seeds for any seed. And then if you see that, okay, my freezer, it reaches, um, I don't know, 32 degrees or less than that. And the seeds are okay. So you have information that it's okay to, you can be freezing those seeds in that way. Okay, you can be freezing those ones, but read before doing that. Because if not, you can be losing that viability of your seeds and it's a little sad. And also you can be losing money uh, and time and everything. So where to get your seeds? In that case, where to get the seeds? You can start uh, just by 
online or locally in the nurseries. So that's the best practice to be looking something uh, local because you can be uh, buying something online, but it's probably any beans or lettuce or flowers or something that comes from California, from Florida, from Texas, from Mexico, from Brazil, from different areas of the world. So that doesn't mean that if because they are selling to you, it's going to germinate and be a happy plant in your area. So for example, here, I'm not going to be growing in orange or avocado because when winter comes, that would be it, right? So in that case, try to look uh, for the seeds locally. And if you're buying online, make sure that it's a variety uh, that can it can be growing in this area, in your area. Because also in this area, we have microclimates, right? So for example, if you're in top of the hill, it can be lower temperatures uh, than just a couple miles uh, from your home. Um, so select high quality seeds. Sometimes we can see that they are really cheap uh, seeds from any store. Uh, it can be from the dollar store, for any store. Uh, it doesn't mean that, yeah, because they are cheap, let's grab a bunch of them and they are gonna be fine. So it's like a roulette. You can have good ones and sometimes not good ones. So. Always try to have a high quality seat. That way you make sure that, okay, you know, you are gonna have 80% of germination, 100% germination, you have good seats. And also uh, before I forget, uh, with some, of, some seeds, for example, the solanaceas, that solanaceas is all the peppers, peppers, tomatoes, um, pepper, tomatoes, potato. So a cucumber, no cucumber, no cucumber, no. So all the eggplant, for example, eggplants, peppers, all of the peppers, tomatoes, and potatoes. And now we have some reports about blight, right? Late blight. So that is something that is highly destructive for solanaceas. Well, for many other plants too, but um, especially this, the, the solanacea so if you have late blight it's hard to control and it's just it's sometimes sad because all the time waiting for the plants growing and then in one week you can lose all of your plants so in that case <clears throat> try to look for especially if you're planting potato tomato eggplants try to look for disease resistant varieties if you're not sure about that, so you can be reaching online what varieties are disease resistant. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes uh, when you go to buy seeds or the seedlings in the tag or the label, you can see this is resistant. So in that case, okay, you know that the plants are uh, not 100% safe, but better than compared with the ones that they are not disease resistant. And it doesn't mean that it's... Um, uh, genetically modified or anything like that. It's just any hybrids. So when you hear, hear hybrids is when um, the, the experts, they are just playing with the pollination, just crossing cross pollination and then having a new seed from two different plants. So they have uh, the, good, the good part of this plant and this plant. And that's basically hybrids. They are not modified in a laboratory. And uh, this is just a tip uh, before going to buy any of these plants, especially because we didn't have, we have some reports uh, from 2019 and it just every uh, couple seasons that we can hear something about that. But just yesterday I got an email about in local area about some tomatoes that uh, well, it hasn't been identified by laboratory, but just by the symptoms and everything, it looks like late light. And it destroyed everything around. So be careful with that. It's nice to be uh, to have this prevention before even starting our seeds. <coughs> and when you are buying from catalogs, uh, 
make sure there is reputable suppliers, suppliers because nowadays even not only for seeds for everything there are tons of um, fake websites fake uh, catalogs and fake uh, things online that you can get scammed or just getting terrible quality seeds and paying for something like that so always make sure that it's reputable suppliers if you don't know and like reviews and or just getting something local right it's it's even better so once you start your seed there is not a science about how to start your seed you can start in a tray you can start in water in a dump paper towel uh, it depends what method you want to use or if it's hydroponic uh, but when is the time to be moving the seedlings to the garden because this is one of the steps that i get questions sometimes like when to do that because this is the moment when we can be killing a lot of plants. So all the time germinating and preparing the seeds, especially if we are doing some stratification or scarification, eh, any pre-treatment, and then moving the plants and boom, they are dead next day. Because we can easily break the root system, we can be easily breaking the stem, eh, or just by temperature. Sometimes we move the plants too early in the season and just the, the chuck of the temperature, it kills the plant. So the best time is when night temperatures, they are reaching 60 degrees or above 60 degrees. Uh, it's a general advice because some plants, they are uh, hardy enough and they can tolerate some cool temperatures. For example, lettuce, arugula, uh, beets, onions, so carrots. Uh, for those ones, they tolerate even 50 degrees at night and they are not going to be like that. But still, if you have the uh, the seedlings indoors, uh, so we have a different temperature, right? In that case, it's better to start hardening off the plant. So what is about that hardening off? Probably you heard about that before. If not, it's just the process of moving slowly the plants from indoors to outdoors. So you have your tray. And then when the temperature at night is 60 degrees or above, okay, now I can, next day, during the day, you move the plants outside for one hour or two hours and then move them back inside uh, in a shady area, not directly sunlight. And then next day, it can be now three hours and taking them indoors again. And next day, it can be six hours and just slowly, um, yeah, slowly giving that transition, that's the word, the transition, uh, for the plants to be adjusting to the new environment. And once they are outside one day, so now you can start moving the plants directly to the garden, to a sunny area where they are going to finally be growing uh, out there in the garden. So when the plant in the moment, this is about time and temperature. And how about the plant? So you see that for most of the plants, they germinate and they have two leaves. So that doesn't mean that is the time to be putting the plants out there. Because <clears throat> the seed, the first uh, leaves, they are just like the seed leaf. The, the name for that is the cotyledon. Uh, cotyledon and these ones, they are not hard enough to be out there and using photosynthesis and uh, helping the plant in that way. So uh, we need to wait for the true leaves. So when the finally, after these initial leaves, we can see now two or three of the new leaves coming. So when that happens, okay, now we can start moving the plants outside. Not when they are just the first days after germination, uh, it's not good to be moving that one. And when you're going to move your seeds, don't grab the seeds from the stem or from the leaves. In that case, try to use, if you're using a, a tray, for example, you can just squeeze the, the bottom of the tray. And in that case, the soil comes up and you can grab the soil. If not with a spoon or anything around the, the roots, trying not to break the root system. And that's the best way to be taking the plants outside. And there are some options that probably you know about 
uh, these ones because they are easy and it's about asexual propagation is when we don't need seeds and it's about cuttings just something like oh i like this plant uh, can i have a, a cutting from that and then you bring a cutting from the plant from the office or your friend or your family and you put that in water and a couple of days later you can see the roots uh, here like for some pothos and mostly the plants in the indoor plants that they uh, they are hardy one they hardy ones they don't need uh, much attention about that and they can be growing roots in just in water that doesn't work for any every plant out there. Uh, so same time, if you're not sure about if this plant is going to grow in this way or not, you can be reading about that. And another way is layering. So layering plants is the technique where you lay the plant and then cover with some soil. And then the plant start creating the seeds, uh, the seeds, sorry, the roots, and then uh, some leaves. So this is a, a tip in case that you didn't know with tomato plants, for example, if you break the plant, probably it's so easy to break tomato plants. Uh, so sometimes we are, yeah, happy bringing the seedlings and then putting in the garden and boom, we break the plant and it's like, oh, so that's not the end of the world. That's not the end of that plant because you can use the stem, not the leaves, the stem. You can have the stem, remove the leaves, and just lay the stem uh, covered with soil, not too deep, just enough to cover the stem, put some water, and then you have multiple plants coming. So you can recover your, your tomato plants from in that way, or getting multiple plants just from one, one stem. Because when you see uh, like this hair, it's not, officially hair. Uh, so when you see these structures that the tomato has, like that hairy um, texture that they have. So each individual of these ones, when they are covered and with water, so they have that ability to uh, grow new roots from that. And then growing new roots, growing new plants, and you have new tomato plants in that way. So easy, so simple. And also division. So for example, you have some flowers, some bulbs, um, chives, for example, when you have a lot of chives and they are growing, you can just literally divide the plant and then put, now you have two different plants or three different plants and they are not gonna suffer, they are, they are not gonna die. Uh, you just divide the plant in two or three pieces uh, by the root. So you take the whole plant and that's it. It's simple. You divide the plant and they survive that and then they keep growing and keep growing. <clears throat> now, some of the tools and equipment uh, is, for example, the seed, uh, seed trays. We have the, that's simple. That's the most common uh, way to do it, right? Um, some seed starting mix. Sometimes we have, we can buy the the planters, they, they can be small cups or anything that is just adding water. You don't need you to be planting anything. You just add water and then wait a couple of days and voila, the, the plants are there. The seeds, they were already in there, just waiting for that water. Other than that, they have the fertilizer, they have everything in there to grow. Um, the labels, like I mentioned, always label your your plants. That happens a lot. Uh, that we use probably some marker, and then the first rain it was raining, and then no idea what is growing in there. What the seeds, even when they start growing, is like hmm, is that a cucumber? Is that a squash? Is that like they look pretty similar? So in that case, uh, make sure that you have good labels and good markers, like waterproof um, or with tape or just make sure any method that you want to make sure that you have the good labels out there. And the water is watering system. So when it's indoors, just with a small watering pen, it's that simple. 
uh, you don't need much water. You can save water even if in the with the trays. Some of these trays, sometimes you put something on top or some of them, they already uh, come with this protection. So it creates like the uh, greenhouse effect and same time it increases the temperature. It, it helps to retain the water in there. So the seeds, they are growing even way faster. Uh, water uh, heating mat. So if it's a little cold because we can start the seeds about February, March, April, so it's still cold and sometimes because it's cold and they are not germinating. So in that case, you can use a heat mat under the tray. So you can put that under the seed tray and that's simple. The seeds start coming um, to life. They start germinating. The growing lights, if it's necessary, the fact that you have a basement, for example, or a very dark room, it doesn't mean that you cannot be growing your, your seeds. Uh, so you can use any growing light, make sure that it's a growing light. Um, nowadays, it, no need to be using these pink lights. Some people hate the purple or pink light. Uh, so it's good that nowadays we have some LED lights that is full spectrum, so it for germination, for growing the plants, uh, for any stage of the plant, you have a good quality light. And they are not that expensive like years ago. And so that's something that you can get online. The growing lights, and just in that case, you need to read with the provider, the, the company making the lights about uh, how close they need to be from the from the plant, from the seed tray, from the plant, and you need to be adjusting that height. And also the ventilation, uh, like I mentioned before, the plastic cover to make them grow faster. Any ventilation, we need air still, some air coming into the, the environment, the seed trays. Uh, the seedling fertilizer, usually not necessary if you're using potting mix. The potting mix, it has fertilizer in it, if you're using your own mix or just any soil from seasons before, in that case, probably just a water fertilizer, anything that is not the pellets, just water. So, or, can you, or you can mix in, be mixing with water and then watering the, the seeds with that fertilizer. And, and you can start, of course, always is good to have some calendar or journal uh, for your seeds. So I don't know if we have enough time. This is a demonstration. Yeah, it's just two minutes. So this is just one of, uh, no, uh, sorry. Next one. Okay, 
So this is just one of the methods uh, to be uh, using cutting, to be rooting some of the cuttings uh, using just perlite or any substrate that they don't have a lot of nutrition. Sometimes just water, it can be enough to be water, to be water and to be um, uh, rooting some of these cuttings. So there is the method of the la layering, like I mentioned before, you lay the plant or sometimes naturally they do it. For example, the strawberries, you can see that they can look for new places and then keep growing uh, new plants from, from the, the original plant, from the mother plant. And we can have also the stolon, that's called the stolons or runners, uh, rhizomes. So we can see the bulbs that they can uh, they keep looking for new places, but underground and then boom, new plants, they start coming. So for example, ginger and most of some flowers with uh, rhizomes. Uh, we have the crowns. So for example, for valerian roots, so we can plant only the crown, even if it looks dry and they come back to life and they, you can propagate in that way. The offsets, especially for succulents, that is like the tiny succulent growing and next to the mother plant. And in that case, you can use that tiny one and they are gonna grow and be healthy. And yeah, it's successful. And the suckers, like the tomatoes, they are good because even if you break some part of the plant, you have a new sucker coming and the plant keep growing from there. And also you can be replanting some of the roots or crowns like the onion, for example, they just the root that little part of the root of the onion and put directly in the soil. The celery, you can uh, leave like this much, so a couple inches from the, the root and using your celery and putting that, the rest of it, you can use the rest of it and put in this part in water. Same with the lettuce, for example, that's another a good example. In water, or the, in, you can see the roots coming again. And then when they are creating the roots, you can move to the soil. And now you have a new uh, lettuce from that. Some of those in water, you can be growing from water, the, like the onion, the carrots also, you can be cutting this part and put it in the soil and they keep growing again. So some of the tips, uh, it's about choose the right method for, for your plant. So it is gonna be, uh, if it's cutting, division, layering, it's, it depends about the, the plant that you wanna grow. If it's tomatoes, if it's uh, anything that you wanna grow, read before so you know what is the right method for that. If you have the question and you don't have, or you don't know exactly where to be reading about this, you can always send an email and ask uh, us Ask me, ask the master gardeners, and we can help you with that information. Uh, use clean tools, containers, everything clean, especially if you're reusing that from previous seasons. Uh, clean the containers, disinfect the containers and the tools. Um, choose the healthy parent plants. So if you are using any of these methods before, so if they are healthy, you can be using something like that. If the plants are sick, they have some disease or any pests, it's better not to be propagating in that way. Uh, the timing is the key. So be patient because sometimes this can take days, weeks. Um, so if you can read that your seed is gonna be ready in one month or two months, so it's like, okay, take the time waiting for that, especially about trees. Um, for vegetables, it's usually just a couple of days and you have your seeds. And always try to provide the right environment, like I mentioned before. If you buy seeds from California or any different area, it's not going to be nice to be growing here, right? And so be patient, it's, uh, label your seeds. And <clears throat> when you have your seedlings, make sure about the hardening of process uh, because sometimes everything is successfully done and then moving the plants uh, that uh, temperature shock, it can kill the plant. And um, you can keep reading about that. Like I mentioned before, if you have some questions, you can always reach out and we are gonna help you with that information and keep an eye on the seed, seeds and seedlings because sometimes the pests and diseases, they can be eating or killing your, your new plants, your seedlings. 
And that will be it, exactly one hour, 11.03. Uh, so, well, if you have some time, if you want, uh, you have any question right now, so feel free to unmute your microphone or in the chat, leave your questions. And if not, anytime you can send an email or call Cornell Cooperative Extension, Allegheny County, and we are always happy to help. So do we have any questions right now? Okay, if not, like I mentioned before, uh, you can reach out at any time, any moment, and that will be it for today. And tomorrow, the class is uh, pest control, so you can join to that one, uh, or the one for Tuesday, or outdoor, or how to produce your own herbs at home on Friday. And that will be it for today. Thank you for being here, and I'll see you in the next class. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.